Okay, thank you. So, introduction to calculus, the application questions. We start by doing this question. We start by looking at this question. The question reads, the total leveling function The total revenue function is given by TR is equal to 25Q minus 0.5Q pair. You can copy that. The total revenue function is given by TR is equal to 25Q minus 0.5Q square, where Q is the level of output. Where Q is the level of output. So the question now here is to find. A marginal revenue function. The marginal revenue function is the same as the MR. We are told to determine the MR. I hope you can be able to remember whatever we discussed in our previous classes, but the marginal revenue function is obtained when we differentiate the total revenue function. So, marginal revenue, MR, is a derivative of total revenue. That is to say, a derivative simply means that it is a differentiated function of total revenue. It is a differentiated function of total revenue, and therefore, if total revenue is given by 25Q minus 0.5Q square, the marginal revenue would be equal to change in TR over change in Q. It is simply a differentiated function of uh, total revenue. And how do we differentiate the total revenue? Remember here we have our one, one times 25, we are going to have it is 25. One minus one is zero. Zero or two raised to power zero is one. So it will shut up to five minus two times 0 0.5 is going to be one three. One three. Remember we are going to minus one. So our MR is equal to 25 minus Q. Our uh, MR is going to be equal to 25 minus Q. It is just a matter of differentiating the total revenue for you to get the marginal revenue. That is what part one was asking. Part one or A was asking that. Then part B, B is asking level of output. Level of output when MR is equal to zero. Level of output when MR is equal to zero. Obviously, if MR is equal to zero, and we have the function, then we shall say therefore 25, 25 minus Q, therefore should be equal to zero. We take two to the other side, we find that 25 will be equal to Q. 
25 will be equal to Q. So when MR is equal to zero, the number of outputs is 25. The quantity in that case it is 25. Then part C, the question talks about you determine the maximum, the maximum total revenue, the maximum total revenue. I hope you remember this. Whenever you find the word max, just note that that point is the turning point. That is the turning point, the turning point of total revenue. And we know at the maximum point, the gradient function or the gradient of that particular function is zero. The gradient is zero. So you can say this at maximum total revenue, the gradient function of total revenue change in TR or a change in T must be equal to zero. But not change in T R or a change in Q is the same as the MR. It's the same as MR. So you will find that if you equate this to zero, remember MR is equal to this, and MR was obtained by doing change in T R or a change in Q, and we found this to be the equation or the gradient function of the total revenue, which is the same as the MR. And once we equated this one to zero, we found that that quantity was equal to 25. So the number of units that are going to be sold from the revenue to the maximum, those units are 25. If we sell 25 units, then we are going to realize the maximum revenue. Therefore, what we need to do is to take this number of units and substitute them in the total revenue function. Substitute them in the total revenue function. So this is what we get. When Q is equal to 25, just a minute. When Q is equal to 25, the total revenue will be equal to 25Q, which is the same as 25. Q remember is 25. It's supposed to be 25Q, which is now 25 times 25 minus 0 0.5 times 25 square. If I can ask, what is 25 times 25? 625. So our total revenue will be 625 minus 625 times 0 0.5. Hey, say something. Zero, uh, 625 times 0 0.5. 12.5. Uh, sorry? 312.5. 312.5. So you find that the total revenue will be 312.5. That is going to be the total revenue or the total maximum revenue for that case. The maximum revenue is going to be that. The maximum revenue for that. And that will be earning 10 marks. That will earn you 10 marks. One thing. If you are told to get the margin revenue, you simply differentiate the total revenue function. If you are told to get the level of output when MR is zero, it is the equation of MR and you put it to zero so that you can be able to determine the value of Q. If you are told to get the maximum total revenue, we know at the maximum point, the gradient is zero, and the gradient, it is the differentiated function of that particular Item in this case, we differentiate the total revenue. What we get is the marginal revenue, and we can obtain here the Q is 25. That quantity, take it now to the total revenue, and then substitute it where we will have Q for you to be able to get the total revenue that is going to correspond with that quantity. Kunaswari? Yes. 
I didn't know where 0 0.5 went. 0 0.5? Yes. This one? Yeah. It went because it put at 0 0.5 is 1. See, we know the rule of differentiating. The power, yeah. if 2 is multiplied by 0 0.5, the answer is 1. 1 times Q is the same as Q. Noted. Okay. Any other question? Okay. I hope you have uh, copied that. I hope you have copied that. That was the question for July 2019. July 2019. That's excuse me, teacher. Allah, ex excuse me, teacher. Yes. Uh, part C. Help. Uh, just let me see part C. Part C. Thank you. I'm okay. I hope you are done. Yes. If you want to see the other part, how we have completed that. Okay, as uh, you finish up with that, we can write this question two. So you are given that the following are the average revenue and the average cost functions of the farm. Those are the average revenue is equal to 100 minus 0 0.5 Q. Average cost is given by 50 plus 2.5. 
to finish lab so that I can adjust the camera. So that is the total revenue function. 
The other responsibility we have is to get to the total cost function from the average revenue function, average cost function rather. If you are given the average cost, how do you get to the total cost? The average cost, it is actually the cost of one item. The total cost, there are all, total cost is given by average cost times Q. In this case, the average cost is 50 plus 2Q, then we multiply by Q. So that we get that the total cost is going to be given by 50Q plus 2Q squared. Like that. Now that we have the total cost and we have the total revenue, we can get the profit function, which is now going to be given by total revenue minus total cost, 100 Q minus 0 0.5 Q squared minus into brackets. Remember, always when you are subtracting the total cost, the total cost function must be in brackets. So total cost is 50 Q, plus two Q squared. If you open the bracket, you find that profit will be given by 100 Q minus 0 0.5 Q squared minus this sign will change the sign over whatever we have inside the bracket. Negative times that positive will be negative 50 Q, negative and positive is negative 2Q squared. Then from there, you can put the light arms together to find that pi is equal to 100Q minus 50Q, that is the same as 50Q. Zero point, negative 0 0.5 Q squared, negative 2 Q squared, is the same as negative 2.5 Q squared. That is the profit function. That is the profit function. And I want you to have this one at the back of your mind. Yeah? Whenever you are given the average, how do you get the total? The average is for one, then the total is going to be given by that average times the quantity Q. You get the total revenue that way. Similarly, if you are given the average cost, which is the cost for one, to get the total cost, it is that average you multiply by Q, which is the total output, for you to get the cost for all the output. Like that. And that one, you have answered the first question, the profit function. I hope you have copied up to that point so that I am just going to hang If you, have done, if you have done so, then I can turn to my camera so that I can be able to use the other side of the board. So the second part of the question which is B, it was asking level of output that will maximize profit. That will maximize. Level of output that will maximize profit. 
And I said here, any time you find the word maximum or the minimum, then you know that at that point of the profit, the gradient for the profit equation is equal to zero. The gradient for the profit function is zero at that point. And how do you get the gradient? You say this at maximum profit, change in profit over change in Q should be equal to zero. The gradient function is given by change in Y over change in X. And because the profit function, we found it to be pi is equal to 50 Q minus 2.5 Q squared. So the gradient function is changing pi because we have on this side pi and the other side the items are in terms of Q. Therefore, changing pi over changing Q, we differentiate that. This one, because it is power one, one times 50 is going to be equal to 50. Q, remember, it's going to disappear because one minus one, this one that is here is minus one, it is power zero, and the any number is power zero is one, and that one times 50 gives us 50. Minus two times 4.5 is going to be 5Q. Therefore, Therefore, 50 minus 5 is equal to 0 if it is the maximum. Therefore, 50 is equal to 5 k. 50 divided by 5 will give us k. So you will find that k is equal to 10 units. If we produce and sell 10 units, our profit will be maximum. Our profit is going to be Max. And that one is the answer for part B. Part three, or before I go to part three, it is worth noting how else can you be able to get the number of units that maximizes profit. I think I had mentioned this, but it was good we put it in practice as a and Maximum profit, also minus revenue is equal to marginal cost. This is another way. Yeah. This is alternative way. An alternative way of getting that. Alternatively, at maximum profit, marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Then our responsibility will be how do we get the marginal revenue and the marginal cost? And then we put Remember we say the marginal revenue, it is the gradient function of total revenue. And it is the gradient function of total revenue. So for our total revenue, our total revenue, we found it to be 100 Q minus 0 0.5 Q squared. Therefore, our marginal revenue we just differentiate this, which will be 100 minus 2 times this one will be Q. That is the marginal revenue. The same case, if you have the total cost, which we found to be 50 Q, plus 2 Q squared, our marginal cost will be given by 50 plus 4 Q. You know that. If you have total revenue, marginal revenue, you just differentiate. If you have total cost, differentiate that total cost to get the marginal cost. And then now you come here at maximum profit, MR is equal to MC. Therefore, at that point, the MR is 100 minus Q should be equal to 50 plus 4 Q the MR must be equal to MC. Then from there, put the right terms together. 50 to come here, 100 minus 50 is equal to 4 Q. This one will go to the other side, 4 plus Q. So you find that 50 
is equal to 5 Q, and actually Q is equal to 10 units. Q is 10 units. That is an alternative way of getting the number of units that maximizes the profit. MR is equal to MC. MR is equal to MC. Take note of that. Then, uh, after getting the number of units that maximizes the profit, the question is requiring you to proceed to Roman degree where you will calculate the maximum profit. These are the units that maximizes, uh, maximizes the profit, but now we need to know what is that maximum profit. For you to get the maximum profit, take this Q, uh, which is equal to 10, and substitute it in the profit function, and substitute it in the profit function where we have Q just substituted with 10, because Q is 10 at the point where the profit is maximum. So, let me use this part. You can say this when Q is equal to 10, Profit or the total profit is equal to 50 times 2, which is 10, minus 12.5 times 10. In this case, you find that 2500 minus 25, which will be equal to 475. Profit will be equal to 475. That is enough to earn you 10 months. That is enough to earn you. So, if you are going to get the maximum profit, it is as simple as this. The number of units that maximizes profit, you substitute that in the profit function so that you can be able to get the value for pi when Q is those number of units that you have identified to be the ones that will maximize the profit. That is all that is required. I want us to do another question. These questions are highly examinable. They are highly examinable. I want to do another question here. You are told that the demand The demand and average cost functions for the farm are given by they are given by. The P is equal to 1300 minus 1 over 4 Q. And then you are told that operate cost is given by Q minus 400 plus 400 over Q. Where P is tax in shillings, where P is tax in shillings, and uh, Q is the quantity of 
the quantity in the units. Q is the quantity in the units. Then, uh, whatever you are going to determine here, a quantity that maximizes profit, quantity that maximizes profit from the farm. How many units should the company produce and sell for its profit to be max? We have just done that. You have got two approaches that you can use. The first approach is to get the profit function. Differentiate the profit function and equate it to zero. You get the value of Q that will maximize profit. The other alternative that you have is to get the marginal revenue and marginal cost, then you equate the two. But in this question, because part B is also requiring you to get the maximum profit, then we don't have alternative. We must get the profit function. We must get the profit function. Remember my first question that I did here. My first question that I did here, I told you this. Whenever you are given the price, this price is the same as the average revenue, it is the same as the demand. And actually, we are told that it's the demand function there. You don't have to struggle in this question. Whenever you are told it's the price, just know that that is the revenue for one, or it is the average revenue. So, your total revenue, we say it is average revenue times Q, or price times Q. So, our total revenue and profit are going to be found by multiplying the price function, which is 1300 minus 1 over 4Q, we multiply by Q so that we can arrive at the total revenue function. So in this case, multiply Q or we open the bracket by multiplying by Q everything. So you find that it's going to be 1300 Q minus 1 over 4Q squared. That is the total revenue function. Similarly, whenever you have been given the average cost function, the total cost is given by the average cost times quantity. In this case, the average cost is given as Q minus 400 plus 400 over Q, then we multiply everything by Q. This one will give you what? Total cost is equal to Q squared minus 200 Q. 400 over Q times Q. This Q and that Q will cancel out. This Q and that Q will cancel out. So we shall have plus 400. And that is our total cost function. Therefore, our profit, which we know is given by total revenue minus total cost, profit in this case is given by the total revenue function is here, 1300 Q minus 1 over 4 Q squared minus, don't forget that bracket is very, very important, into bracket to minus the total cost, which is Q squared minus 200 Q plus 400 as given there. Then we need to open the bracket on the side of the bottom cost. We put the right arms together, then we shall come out with the profit point.
So this is part. So pi will be equal to thirteen hundred Q minus one over four Q squared minus Q squared plus two hundred Q minus four hundred. Remember, note this negative will change no sign. Whatever it is positive, it becomes negative. What is negative, it becomes positive. Right? So pi will be equal to 1300 Q plus 200 Q. That one will give us 1500 Q. Minus a total two squared minus two squared. That is the same as minus one and a quarter, which is the same as one. 0.25 Q squared minus 400. That is the profit function. That is the profit function. After doing TR minus TC, and we put the right term together, this is what we get. Then from there, if the question is asking about quantity that maximizes profit, then we know at Maximum profit, changing profit over changing Q is equal to zero. Or the derivative of profit must be equal to zero. Therefore, change in profit over changing Q is given by, we differentiate that, 1500 minus. I think that one will be 2.5 Q. Therefore, fifteen hundred minus two point five Q will be equal to zero. Fifteen hundred is equal to two point five Q. Fifteen hundred over two point five should give us Q. In a person who is uh, very fast, and to do this, fifteen hundred divided by two point five. What do you get? Six hundred. Somebody say something. Six hundred. Some, Six hundred. Mm. So Q is equal to six hundred units. Just getting the profit function, you differentiate the profit function and equate equate that function into zero. You get the value of Q. This is the quantity that maximizes profit. That is the quantity that maximizes. Oh. Copy that. Excuse me, Mwalim. Yes. Where have you got 2.5 Q and it was 1.25? I think you must be having some challenges with differentiating. If you multiply 2 times 1.25, if you multiply 2 times 1.25, what do you get? Just do it using your calculator. Mm. Okay. What, you, what are you getting? Yes, I got it, 2.5. So there's no way you can differentiate and put an equation and it remains the same. It must have a, a change. Here we had 1500 Q. Once we differentiate it, it will go to 1500 without the Q. This power will always multiply this, get this, and the other one will disappear. So always the power will multiply. Remember here it was power one. One times fifteen hundred 
you will make it 100, but it gets two will disappear because one minus one is zero, and the zero raised to power one, uh, sorry, q raised to power zero is one. This two would multiply this, gets 2.5, and this two, because it was power two, the power will reduce by one, so it is two power one. And here, we remember we say, whenever there is no Q, there is Q power zero. That zero times 400, will make everything to be zero. That's why we don't get it there. So the power will change the value of the coefficient. OK. Uh, that was A, quantity that maximizes profit. B, you are told you will combine the maximum profit. Maximum profit. So this is the point you need to remember that. The maximum profit is obtained by substituting the quantity that maximizes the profit on the profit function. And uh, if you can look at what's above, we say that the profit function is given by 1500Q minus 1.25Q squared minus 400. That is the profit function. And now the profit is going to be maximum when Q is 600. The profit is going to be maximum when Q is 600. So you can come here and say when Q is equal to 600, the profit is going to be equal to 1500 times 600. Instead of 1500 times Q, it is now going to be times 600 minus 1.25 into 600 squared, Q squared minus 400. So, and somebody multiplied for me 1500 times 600. Nine hundred thousand. Try to speak up. Uh, Nine hundred thousand. Okay, 900,000. Minus. I want to first of all to square 600. 600 squared. 600 squared. I think it's going to be what? 360,000. 360,000 will multiply by 1.25. 600 squared. The answer you get multiplied by 1.25. Anybody who has it? For oh, 50,000? Sorry? 450,000. 400 and? 450,000. For 50,000. Minus 400. Then now you can work out this. 900,000 minus 450. That is the same as 450,000. 450,000 minus 400. Four hundred and ten thousand. No, four hundred forty-nine. Oh? Six hundred. I think it's going to be four forty-nine. 49, six hundred. Six hundred. That is uh, the maximum profit. So I want you to know how to do those. Uh, because uh, it is part of the question that is highly tested. How do you get the units that maximizes the profit? First of all, get the profit function, differentiate it, and whatever you get, put it to zero to get Q. Once you have Q, to answer the question of the maximum profit, substitute the Q in the profit function. You work it out, you get the maximum profit. But you cannot get the maximum profit before you get the units that maximizes profit. You cannot get the maximum profit 
before you get the units that maximizes profit. Because those are the units that are going to be substituted in the profit function. Lastly, Roman three of C, the question was asking that that maximize profit, price that maximize profit. The question of price can only be answered using the price equation. Remember, we were given that price is equal to 1300 minus one over four Q. That was the equation for the price, which is the same as the demand or average revenue. The price that maximizes profit is the price when Q is 600. The price when Q is 600, because Q, it is the quantity that maximizes profit. And actually then we need to know what is the price when Q is 600, which is actually the quantity that maximizes the profit. So here, P would be equal to 1300 minus one over four times Q, but our Q now is 600. This is going to be 1300 minus 150, if I'm not wrong. So this one is going to be equal to 100, 1150. That is going to be the price. That is going to be the price which will maximize, or the, the price that is going to maximize the profit. The same thing substituted in the, in the price function. And also note how, how can you get the price function? Remember, don't forget always that the price function is the same as the coverage. And actually, average revenue is total revenue of a cheaper. If you want to get the price function, if you are interested in getting P, total revenue divided by Q. And uh, if you multiply both sides by Q by Q, you find that average revenue times Q is a standard. So you need to know how you move backward and forth. Eh? How you move when you are given average revenue. How do you get total revenue? When you are given total revenue, how do you get average revenue? When you are given total revenue, how do you get marginal revenue? And when you're given marginal revenue, how do you get total revenue? You need to know how to move along with that. I want us to do one final question. The one that is involving, yes. This one will form the climax for this topic. This will form the climax. Well, given that, let me write the question. This is number three. Is it number three or number four? Okay, fine. You are told that the following the following functions. Yes. You are given those two functions, and uh, you are told that MR is marginal TC Q So 
So MR is the margin of revenue, TC is the total cost, Q is the units produced and sold. Then Roman one, we need to determine We needed to determine the profit count. We needed to determine the profit count. It has never changed. It has never changed that profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. That is the underlying principle. But if you look at whatever that the person has provided with, uh, it has given us the marginal revenue and the total cost. And for the total cost, that is very okay. That is what we need. We need the total cost here. But here, we have been given the marginal revenue, but what we need is the total what we need is the profit. This is the point you need to remember that uh, if we differentiate total revenue, we get the marginal revenue. At the same time, you need to remember what we said in our discussion that we have got what we call differentiation and integration, where these two concepts are the opposite of one another. If you are given the total revenue, we have said if you do change in the total revenue of a change in quantity, this one is the same as marginal revenue. If we differentiate the total revenue, then whatever we get is the marginal okay. revenue. Then it is as simple as this. If to come from a total revenue to marginal revenue, we have differentiated. Then if we have the marginal revenue to go all the way back, sorry for that interruption. Sorry for that interruption. I was saying this, if we differentiate total revenue, we normally get the marginal revenue, which is changing the TR of a change in Q, it is the same as marginal revenue. Which simply means then, if we have been given the marginal revenue, to go all the way back to total revenue, we need to integrate. We need to integrate. Because marginal revenue, it is a differentiated total revenue function. Therefore, if you want to go back to total revenue and we have the marginal revenue, we integrate that so that we can go back to the total revenue. So here, we need to do this. Then we can say this if marginal revenue is equal to that 253 minus 0 0.10 total revenue will be equal to what? That 253, remember with the integrating, we normally add one. Remember we say whenever there is no Q here, there is a silent Q less to power zero. Eh? There is Q power zero that is not indicated. Yet. So we find that we're going to be Q less to power zero plus one over zero plus one is one over one minus zero point one Q. Remember, this is Q power one. One plus one will be two. Then we divide by two. Then we need to add a plus C. But in this case, when we are doing the application, we don't put plus C. We leave it at that point. So that we realize that the total revenue is going to be equal to that 
53 kilo power one power one does not have any effect minus what is 0 0.1 divided by two happiness Yes, yes, somebody, somebody, 0 0.1 divided by 2. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 0 0.05 0 Q squared. 0 0.05 Q squared. And that is the total revenue. Just to note that, when you are given marginal revenue, the total revenue is going to be obtained by integrating the marginal revenue given. And when you have the total revenue and you want to get the marginal revenue, you differentiate the total revenue factor. So in these questions, you need to know how to move from one equation to the next. If you are given the average revenue, you need to ask yourself, how do I get the total revenue? If I'm given the marginal revenue, how do I get the total revenue? You need to understand those functions. Once we have the total revenue function and we were given the total cost function, then we can comfortably get the profit function. We can get the profit function, which will be equal to total revenue, which is 53 Q minus 0 0.05 Q squared minus the total cost. The total cost is given here into bracket 0 0.2 Q squared plus 5M. So you will find that this is going to be that 253 Q minus 0 0.05 Q squared minus 0 0.2 Q squared. Negative positive is minus five millions Q. Then we can put the right terms together. That two fifty three minus five million because they are got Q Q. They are right terms. Can you minus them? That two fifty three minus five million. Whoever has the answer can uh, supply negative four, four million, four million, negative four million nine hundred and ninety six seven forty seven, four million nine ninety six four. 747. 747. Like that, huh? Yes. Q. Negative. Negative. Okay. Yes, yes. It's negative, yeah. Negative 0 0.05 minus 0 0.02 because they don't have Q square. Minus zero point two five. I think that is going to give us the, the profit function. Eh? The, the number of units to be produced and sold in order to maximize profit. The number of units to be produced and sold in order to maximize profit. Those units that will be produced and sold for the profit to be maximum, it is actually at the point where by changing profit of a change in Q is zero. Changing profit of a change in Q is zero. So that's, that's the 
mass. To demonstrate that, we come here and say at maximum pi, 10 in pi over 10 in Q is equal to zero. Where 10 in pi over 10 in Q would be equal to what? If we differentiate this, Q will disappear because it is power one, one times this one, it has no effect, but one minus one, Q will disappear. We shall have negative 499. Six seven four seven minus zero point five. That is the same as zero point five Q minus zero point five Q. So Negative four nine nine six seven forty seven minus zero point five zero should be equal to zero. So we take that one to the other side. equals to 0 0.5 of that. Then you divide negative 4, 996, 7.7 over 0 0.5 is equals to Q. The answer will be negative, but in this case, we ignore the negative sign. You ignore the negative sign and it will give you the quantity that will maximize the profit. Then the last question is uh, for you to determine the maximum profit. You determine the maximum profit. The same way. Any question as far as that is concerned, I think the topic now is coming to an end at that point. Unless there is a question. That part where you're saying we ignore the negative sign. Come again. The part where you're asking us to ignore the negative sign is that uh, there's no point we're ever going to have a negative, right? A negative at what point? Uh, after we divide the... Four nine nine six seven four seven and uh, zero point five. You said we should ignore the negative sign. So my question is, uh, well, let's say we have uh, such a question. It's okay to ignore or the answers to notice the negative. If, if sign. the answer is negative, you ignore the negative sign. Eh? Okay, okay. You ignore the negative because you cannot produce negative units. You cannot eh? match. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. I'm not getting you so clearly, but I hope I have answered you. Yes, you have. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? So what you need to remember here is how to get the total revenue when you are given average revenue or marginal revenue. How do you get the the same case, how do you get total cost when you are given the average cost and marginal cost? And then from there, you can answer any question that talks about calculus. Because the questions that we have answered today, they are the only ways you can be tested. You can be tested when you are given the average revenue, the average uh, cost, marginal revenue, marginal cost, total revenue, total cost. And then you know how to move along with them. You know how to move along with them. So I will request you just to go through the past papers. 
and uh, go through those questions. You cannot have two consecutive sittings where this question is missing. Either it is consecutive like three times, it misses one, it continues coming, or it is going to be a gap of one year. And then everything is okay. Just go, you listen to your past papers. If there is any question that you feel that I have not explained, just feel free to get it done. When we meet on Friday, we shall move on to a new area or a new topic, which I'm going to identify and present to you on that particular day. At that point, I want to end our class at that point. I hope you have enjoyed, I hope you have understood, and wish you a lovely evening. <laughs> you too. Hey, so yeah. You too. Thank you, Malin. Bye. Nani ana sema yawa. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I get to see with Jesus. Where where una sema didi? Kwa full time. Nani alikuwa full time?